I was in Toronto, Canada on 9-11. Um, just to give you a bit of my history of what I was doing in Toronto, in the year 2000, I started my first television series called Doc. I played a doctor who was uh, a doctor from Montana who had moved to New York City um, to bring a little bit of his hometown countryness to the big city to do his own way of helping his fellow man and he felt my character Dr. Clint Cassidy was his name um, it was his way of uh, he felt like that um, that in the city that, um, that he just felt a lot of uh, there was a chance there for him a humanitarian meets a doctor meets all these different things the series was on PAX television each episode tried to represent a little bit of hope and faith and love a bit of a touch by an angel um, kind of story um, but again I played a doctor and um, that was my first series we started in the year 2000 and in um, 2000 um, we completed our our first year which I think was 22 episodes, possibly 18, but I know it was a full year. So don't quote me on that, but it was either 18 episodes or 22 episodes. Either way, we completed the first year of Doc, and we broke for the summer while I went out and did some tour dates. Um, during the summer, the writers had written an episode based around a song that I had written back in 1989 about a Vietnam veteran the song was called Some Gave All. And uh, again, I wrote Some Gave All back in 1989 about a Vietnam veteran that I had met while I was playing a little club in Huntington, West Virginia called the Ragtime Lounge. And I met this gentleman named Sandy Kane and driving home that night to my home in Southern Ohio, I wrote a song about him. And um, the night I wrote the song, you know, I, I felt like somewhere along the lines, this song has something to do with a bit of my purpose, if not a substantial amount of it. I felt there was something special about the song. Well, by 1991, I began recording the album, Some Gave All. Some Gave All became the song that I played for record executive in Nashville, Tennessee, and after 10 years of being told no, 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 all the way from Nashville to L.A. and back many, many times, somebody finally said yes, and it was based around one meeting. I came in with my acoustic guitar. I sat on a couch and said, this is the best thing I got. If this ain't good enough, I probably need to do something else. I played Some Gave All, and after 10 years of being told no, someone said yes. So in January of 1991, I started recording the album Some Gave All and began with the song Some Gave All. And I don't want to use the word coincidentally because I don't believe in coincidences. I think everything happens for a reason. But on the day I recorded Some Gave All, the original Gulf War started in 1991, that very day. It wasn't planned that way. It's just the way it happened. Well... Some Gave All becomes the title track of my first album, which doesn't come out until May of 1992. During that time period from 91 to 92, I was living basically in my car. Um, uh, just a guy with a dream that it, you know, and um, again, you know, based around the fact that um, in America, thanks to our veterans, a guy like me can have the freedom to pursue those dreams. And that's why Some Gave All took on a substantial amount of importance to me. And so by the year 2000, and we had completed one season of Doc, during that summer, the writers were going to open up season two, 
with a story about a Vietnam veteran who's in the hospital in New York City. And that's going to be show number one of season two. And the story had been written during the summer, and it was titled, Some Gave All. And I toured the summer of, of 2001, and um, during that summer, uh, it was busy, uh, just busy all the time doing concert dates. And a week before I was flying back up to Toronto, they sent me that first script, and I thought, how amazing. Some gave all. I'm going full circle in some ways, and I was so proud of that story and just felt like, what a great way to start season two. So on September the 10th, I flew from Nashville, Tennessee to Toronto, and uh, it was a, a late flight. I got in, I think, just a little bit after midnight, and um, uh, my work permit had expired. Um, I had my passport, but my work permit had expired, and the plan was with the production office is that I would go ahead and go to that office at the airport and renew my work permit as I cleared customs. So as I was clearing customs, I cleared customs, and I mentioned, I said, you know, my work permit, can I go ahead and get this now? And they said, you know what? It's so late. Let's just take care of it tomorrow. Okay. Well, none of us knew then what tomorrow was going to bring. So I went to my little, uh, my little place I stayed there. It was a little, wasn't a hotel. It was like an apartment. It was an apartment. So I went to my little apartment room and um, laid down for the night. And uh, a few hours later, the you know, sun came up, and always we would start, you know, 5.30 a.m., 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, and I was on my way to work to go begin filming the episode Some Gave All for the first episode of season two of Doc. Now, I should back up just a little bit. During season one, on two given nights in the middle of the night, I had the most awful dream. And the dream was exactly that America had been attacked and the borders were locked down and I couldn't get home to guard my family. And on one given night during the year 2000, that dream was so real at three o'clock in the morning when I woke up from this dream and I just was, it was so real. America had been attacked. I couldn't breathe. And I, my windows in the apartment wouldn't open up and it was 25 stories high. So I, I ran trying to get my breath. I thought maybe I was having a heart attack or something. I jumped in the elevator, went down, ran out on out the front of the building to the edge of the lake where the cold wind was blowing off of the lake and um, stood and got my breath. And it's that moment, if you've ever had a nightmare like that, of standing there going, it was just a dream. It was just a dream. It wasn't. So that happened during the year of 2000. Okay, now back to 2001 the first day of work, it was 9-11. Again, I had flown in on 9-10. It's the morning of 9-11. The very opening scene, I'm standing by this actor who's portraying a Vietnam veteran. He's telling me that he, he was a, telling me about being a uh, POW and that he, they kept him in a concrete box. I'll never forget that. That was his line. And he lived in a concrete box. And early on, it was early, like, I guess, you know, nine o'clock, you know, as it was happening, somebody came in to in between one of the takes and said, a plane has crashed in New York. And, um, 
like we have here, there was a, a monitor for the camera, and uh, in between the takes, that became a monitor that we were monitoring the news. And we would go back and we would shoot the scene again, do the take, and he would tell me about being in that concrete box. Cut, and we would go back, and by then, the news was breaking, and the second plane landed and crashed into the tower. And before all of our eyes, there we stood, all of us gazing upon this screen, watching the whole world change before our eyes. And I'm filming an episode called Some Gave All. And as it's unfolding and then the reality becomes that it's a terrorist attack and then the buildings fall and the world changes. The borders are locked down just exactly like I had dreamed the year previous. And there I stood. The reality that for some reason exactly what I dreamed had unfolded. And there I stood, you know, realizing that the world was never going to be the same. Well, we went on and through the rest of the week um, continued to uh, finish some gay ball. Um, by then, the producers and I and the writers were talking. I said, this, you know, something's just happening that this is more than just a story now we're telling. This is a piece of American history that we're now part of this. And um, we went on and... Um, uh, our show was normally an hour-long show, and we went ahead and brought in the realism of some gay ball and the dedication of the firefighters and the policemen, and we expanded the story to go to New York City, and I went in and met with the firefighters, and, and we interviewed surviving firemen that told their story of some gay ball. And what happened was our show Doc for that particular episode became more of a documentary of exactly what America was going through at the time based around the service and sacrifice of our previous veterans and what they had been through to build this great nation. And through that, then as we finished filming and the next thing I knew, I was in the middle of New York City riding in the Macy's Day Parade on a float with the, the, the boots and the jackets of some of the lost Firemen, which the float said all gave some, some gave all. And I rode down the middle of New York City, still smelling the smell of the smoke and the ash and the death and destruction. And as you know, the city, the city tried to carry on and they did and they still do. But I remember that moment of riding down with those brave men and their boots and their jackets and their families were there on the street. And it was that moment of, how does this happen to a boy from Kentucky that wrote a song about a Vietnam veteran back in 1989 that somehow through my life's journey 
I end up being in Toronto, Canada in 2011, filming an episode of Doc called Some Gave All, which now has incorporated the realism of what America is going through at this given moment. It's become a very honest documentary of the veterans of war, the veterans of the fire departments, the police department, the the servicemen and women, the those who had given the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. And I'll never forget that moment of being a part of the feeling of the sacrifice that those men and women had made on that given day of 9-11. Again, I think it's up to all of us now to look at that sacrifice and say, those folks didn't give their all in vain. America is still a great country and it's up to each of us to make sure that we all do our part. And a lot of that is saying thank you to those who have given their all. Lest we never forget, all gave some and some gave all.